Hello everyone and welcome to Chess5 and today I'm going to show you a very interesting game between Jeffrey Jeong vs Nils Grandelius and the game is from the FIDE World Cup 2021 so the game is going to be very interesting so till then stay tuned and keep watching Chess5 so Jeffrey Jeong with the white pieces and Nils Grandelius with the black pieces so J Jeffrey Jeong with the white pieces started with 1d4 and we have knight to f6 by Nils Grandelius. We have knight to f3, g6. So perhaps we are going to see a king's Indian defense or Grunfeld defense variation. We have c4 by white, bishop to g7, knight to c3. And if white plays a uh, black plays g6 in this position, then we are in the king's Indian defense variation. But we have d5 by black, so we are now in the Grunfeld variation. We have c to d5, knight to d5 e4 by white, knight into c3, b into c3. So white is definitely having a very nice pawn chain, but black is definitely going to try to break the pawn chain. So after b into c3, we have c5 by white trying to weaken up the center pawns of white. We have rook to b1 by white, so rook to b1 was a very nice move by white. First of all, by playing rook b1, the bishop on g7 is no longer attacking the rook on a1. And the second point, of playing rook b1 in this position here now the bishop on c8 cannot move because the pawn on b7 is hanging so after rook to b1 we have castle by black bishop to e2 and now we have bishop to g4 so black basically basically just gave up the pawn on b7 so white simply captured up the pawn now we have seen to d4 by white now we have knight to d4 by white uh, capturing of the pawn with the pawn could have been a much better move, but capturing of the pawn with the knight well, is also a fine move. So we have queen to c8 by black, hitting the rook on b7 as well as the pawn on c3. So we have rook to b3 by white, bishop into e2, knight into e2, protecting of the pawn on c3. And now we have knight to c6 by black, castle by white, rook to d8 by black. Queen to c2, knight to e5, so perhaps black is planning to play knight to c4, centralizing the knight and knight would be very powerful on the c4 square. So we have h3 by white, yeah definitely, playing h3 is a perfectly fine move, white is creating a square for the king so that there would be no back rank mates in the future. So after h3 we have queen to c6 by black, bishop to g5, rook to d7, First of all, protecting the, the pawn on e7, and the second idea of black is doubling up the rooks on the d5. So, basically, in chess, we all, we should always go for the development. So, this is what both the sides are doing. After rook d7, we have rook to d1 by white. So, white is asking for a rook trade. So, we have h6 by black, hitting up the bishop on g5. So, the bishop definitely have to move. But first, we have rook into d7, capturing up the rook. Queen into d7, we have bishop to h4 by white, rook to d8, and by playing rook to d8, we can see now black is having a full control on the d file. We have knight to d4 by white, knight to c6, asking for a knight trade. So white simply accepted the knight trade, and now we have bishop into e7, capturing of the pawn, hitting the rook on d8. So the rook have to move, so we have rook to e8 by black. Bishop to h4, and now we have rook into e4, capturing up the pawn on e4. Bishop to g3 by white, rook to e1 check, king to h2, queen to c4. It definitely, queen to c4 is a very powerful move, because white was planning to play c4 in the future. Perhaps he can play rook f3, trying to put some weaknesses on the f7 pawn. That's why playing queen c4 was a very nice move by black. And... There could be some serious threats with queen to f1 threatening a checkmate in one. So after playing queen c4, we have f3 by white, and now we have rook to a1 by black, queen to f2, bishop into c3 in this position, which was a blunder by black. In this position, at the place of capturing of the pawn on c3, the best move for black could have been to push the pawn to a5. The reason a5 was the best move in this position was. Here, black is definitely planning to push a4 and plan to capture up the pawn on a2. And black is having a completely fine, fine position in this position. And e actually, 
black is slightly better in this position playing a5 could have been a very nice move by black but we have bishop into c3 by black so this was a blender so after playing bishop into c3 we have queen to e3 by white so trying to hit the bishop on c3 so black played bishop to d4 at the place of playing bishop d4 in this position black should have played queen to f1 in this position queen to f1 was could have been a much better move although white is still better in this position uh so after playing queen queen f1 black is definitely trying to give checkmate one on uh, to white so white have to play bishop f2 make a square for the king to run now we have bishop g7 by black first uh, for simply protecting up the bishop but after bishop g7 okay still white is better but the position is completely playable but after queen e3 we have bishop to d4 by black and this was a blunder by black so i want all of you guys to feel free to pause the video and try to find the best move for white in this position then it is not a single move variation but you need to find a perhaps two or three moves and you will win the game So okay, so all of those who have found Rook to B8 check, congratulations. Playing Bishop to E5 is also a fine move, but Rook B8 is the best move. Rook B8 check, so Black is definitely having two squares to go. King H7, King G7. It doesn't matter where will the king go. In the game, we have King H7, and now comes a fantastic move. If you found this, you are a great player because now comes Bishop to E5 by White. Fantastic move by white. First of all, white is saying, okay, black, do you want to capture up my queen? You can capture up my queen. Because if you try to capture up my queen, now comes rook to h8 and it's a checkmate. Black is doomed. So definitely black uh, cannot capture up the queen. So actually black cannot stop the checkmate on h8. So black decided to capture up the bishop on e5 with a check. So now we have queen into e5. And after playing queen into e5, we can see that the checkmate is unstoppable. Black can play some uh, white, black can play something like f6, but still it's queen e7 check and queen f7 f4. And after queen into f7, it's completely checkmate. That was the reason after after playing queen into e5 on the move number 32, Nils Grandelius with the black pieces resigned the game and Jeffrey Jean with the white pieces played incredibly and find a very interesting tactics in the position and the game was very interesting so in the fourth round Jeffrey Jeong has been qualified and his Grandelius have been eliminated so the fourth round is going to be very interesting because the game is between Jeffrey Jeong versus Vidit Gujarati from India so obviously the game is going to be very interesting so till then if you like the game then you can like to my video if you are new to my channel then you can subscribe to my channel thank you for watching stay healthy stay safe and bye bye